Hey, oh great, we're live now. Oh my goodness, thank you for everyone for tuning in. I was having a couple of technical difficulties and I'm so excited to talk to you tonight all live about how to make a man chase you by creating space. But first, I have a really important question, and that is, can you hear me? <laughs> I want to make sure if you're tuning in that you can absolutely hear me. So let me see here. And if anybody can just open up chat, make sure you can hear me. We can move on. I'm wearing a new microphone tonight, and a couple of you have said before. Okay, fantastic. So good. We're all together. It's so great to see everybody. Hi. Hi, it's so good to see you tonight. I'm so excited to be here and talk about really the best way to get a man to chase you and that is by creating space. And today in my online group, which is on Facebook, it's free, it's totally free to join. It's called I Heart Love Academy. And I Heart Love Academy is again on Facebook and I know what everyone's thinking, you're kind of a anti-Facebook and, <laughs> and all this stuff, but really it's still one of the best ways to all come together and talk and, you know, exchange ideas. And it's over at I Heart Love Academy, which is facebook.com slash groups. I'll put a link below. And I just, I try to use Facebook for good not evil, as always. <laughs> All right, so anyway, over on uh, I Heart Love Academy, today someone had said that I had mentioned to not cook for your man. Or no, she said, does this mean I can't cook for him? That's giving, right? And so I kind of just want to go over some nuances because I think with anything, when you're a woman and you're in your masculine energy, we will take a rule or an instruction and we'll just max it out. We'll take it as far as we can take it even when it kind of goes against, um, you know, kind of common sense because the whole thing that I'm doing is that I'm awakening that your instinct is sometimes steering you the wrong way, your way that's going to sometimes push the man away because it's masculine energy. And it gets very nuanced. You can't really sometimes tell the difference. Like, am I wanting to do this because I want this man to like me, to love me, to come closer to me? Or do I really want to be good to him and I want to cook him dinner? And what am I feeling? Or is, or is this going to be pushing towards him? So tonight I'm just going to go over a couple of things that where you can create space and he will chase you. Trust me on these. Try them with your guy. Now, as always, if you're tuning in to me and you have not subscribed to my channel, please take a moment to subscribe. That supports my work. That helps me make more videos for you. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up because it helps other girls find this video too. And then we can just keep sharing more and more in this information together. Like I say, we are sisters in this. We're all together in this. We are helping other women learn how to use feminine energy. We're helping daughters learn how to do this as well. So when we all come together and agree on it, <laughs> we can really make a big movement and a positive movement. Uh, the feminist movement definitely had some positive things, but also it got a lot of women into their masculine energy comfortably in the relationship. And that's where the divorce rates skyrocketed and there's a lot of confusion about you know you know what a guy can do what a guy can't do and so feminine energy masculine energy in my opinion cures that it gets you back into what is natural yes you were born into a masculine energy world and that is always going to be uh you know something that's evolving and changing Part of the masculine energy world evolving and changing has everything to do with what you are doing with your feminine energy. So you're part of it. You're in a very important time in history where more women are college educated, more women are business owners, small business owners than men. And 
we have so many movements that are positive for women. So part of this positive movement is you learning about feminine energy and especially in your relationships because we love men. We love what they can do for us. They love what they can do to us. And until that changes, we need to learn how to get along <laughs> with men and, and make a really productive and loving and mutual, you know, both of you feeling good in the relationship. All right, so I wanna talk about a couple of things that have come up in some videos and this is gonna help you with creating space. A girl recently uh, wrote on a video of mine that her, I believe it is her boyfriend, not her husband, uh, gets really angry at the way she dresses and he wants her to dress a certain way for him. And apparently she was dressing a little too provocatively. Now, I doubt many of you have this problem, but, and it sounds like a very unique problem, doesn't it? But you can take this and you can apply it to anything. You can really apply it to anything. It sounds incredibly unique, but it is not so unique. You have a man who is saying, I prefer this. Now you have the option to dig your heels in, not change anything about yourself, and keep doing. Sorry, I lost you. Um, you have the option to keep doing things the way you want to keep doing them. But if you want to make the relationship work, you have to make friends with some things. You have to make peace with some things that the man wants. So let's, let's look at this. He wants her to dress a certain way. I had wrote in the comments, I said, if you love this man and you want to be with this man, change how you dress when you're with him. Come his way a little bit. All right, come his way a little bit and let him know, like, okay, I hear you. You're really, really getting him, which is part of my man magnet. One of my man magnet tools is really, really get him. I hear you. I get what you're saying. I don't disagree. I mean, I don't agree. I don't feel that way. Yet, if it makes you feel better, I can change how I dress some. And that man will instantly soften in front of you. He will instantly soften. He might act like a man and go, good, right, that's what I told you. Let him have it. Let him have that moment of feeling like a man. Doesn't matter. He's gonna worship you, he's gonna love you. He's gonna feel you're the one woman who really, really gets him. Now, someone claiming to be a therapist replied to me and said, don't listen to this BS. Dress however you want. You're supposed to be able to dress however you want and do whatever you want and that's your identity and don't let anybody rob you of your identity. You see? Now you can do that. It's not gonna help your relationship if you do. So I am here to help your relationship with the man. And that means he's here, you're here, and you gotta come somewhere in between. I'm teaching you skills that are gonna soften your vibe, soften your energy. Masculine energy is, I'm a ram, you're a ram. You see? That's masculine against masculine. Masculine and feminine, he is moving towards you. He's pursuing you when you lean back. So when you lean back, and this is something I call duly noting, you're duly noting what your guy has said. You're going, I get it. I dress too much this certain way for you. But I love to dress that way. Look, my first husband, everything he ever wanted me to wear was beige. It was beige or white. And I, I, I am a pink and a black and a gray and a red. These are my colors that I like, you know? And I didn't want to wear what he was picking me out to wear. But if I could go back, <laughs> I would come his way a little bit and dress a little bit more in ways that he loves to see me in. Women, do you not love it when you buy your man a nice shirt and he wears it? Don't you love it when he combs his hair and shaves and put on the cologne that you got him at Christmas? Don't you love it? 
Don't you want to just be all over him? So is this any different that the man is making this request, you see? All right, so I hope I have drove home that question. The other one that I got on Love Academy today was about cooking. She said, what if he is my boyfriend? What if we've been together for a while and I want to cook for him? Is that masculine energy? So if you're, if you're not dating anymore and you are in a committed relationship with that man, the rules change. Okay, the rules change. And, and by rules, I mean there is no rule. <laughs> I need different wording. But if, if you want something for dinner, even now with my husband, I let him know what I want for dinner. If it happens to be something he also wants, I cook for two. But I don't go to him and go, honey, what would you like for dinner tonight? I don't do that. He comes to me and says, baby, what do you want for dinner? I was going to cook tonight or I want to take us out. What do you want for dinner? So he's coming to me, you see. He's pursuing me. I will do things like, oh, I think I want steaks tonight. How does steaks sound to you? He'll go, yeah, I'll cook too. Or I'll say, how do you want yours cooked? You see, but I am not cooking dinner for him. Now, if it's his birthday or it's some sort of special occasion, it's, it's fine to do something like that. But as a rule, you're a goddess on a pedestal and it's about you. And, and you have to come first. Otherwise, the man, that energy exchange will shift and you will become in this servant servitude, sort of this serving uh, energy because you're wanting to keep him happy, keep him healthy, keep him loved, keep him nourished. That's not your job to do. Your job is to receive and sprinkle what I call your feminine energy fairy dust into a man's life. A woman can make a man's life amazing and warm and full of purpose and meaning. That's why they keep pursuing us all these years. <laughs> we give them something wonderful. We give them sex. They love it. They love making us feel good. They like what we can do for them. That's one part of it. But also when they come home at the end of the day and the house is, you know, in a nice way. It's pleasing for you. You wanted it this way, but he likes it too. And he likes to see you um, do things that you like to do. Tonight, I was picking the dead stems off of a um, parsley plant of mine. And my husband was just watching me do this. And I realized, I'm like, I think he likes watching me do this. He's observing this feminine energy. They like it. I always tell everyone, it's kind of like when men, um, you know, the girls are having the slumber party and guys are peeking in through the window. They want to see what girls are doing in this feminine energy world. They like it. It relaxes them. It does a lot of things. It doesn't matter. It works. It works. You want your man relaxed. You want him calm. You want him feeling like a man and feeling good around you and pursuing you. Get into your feminine energy. Discover what it means to be a girl. Our society does everything to teach women how not to be a girl. And we got to get back to a world where we are embracing that we are women. We are feminine, soft, feeling, creative emotional bodies and it's when we suppress this stuff that we drive men away and we start you know micromanaging and controlling and um, having explosive temperaments because we're pushing it down okay <laughs> I hope I'm getting through to y'all here <laughs> um, some other ways to create space so the man will pursue and chase you is by really um, having your own endeavors outside of things with the man. It never fails around Christmas, New Year's, the holidays. I will get a lot of emails that say, it is Christmas next week and he has still not asked me what I'm doing. 
He has not invited me to go with him. Next weekend is coming up and I know it's his birthday and he hasn't said anything or it's my birthday and he hasn't said anything. What should I do? Make your own life. If you're secretly hoping that you will have a date with him on Friday and it's like Wednesday and you haven't heard from him, make your own plans. He'll call you up probably at about 4.05 on Friday <laughs> and he'll say, what are you doing tonight? And say, or he'll say, hey, I was thinking we could go see this movie tonight. Oh my goodness. Oh, I feel so disappointed. That would have felt really, really good. Except I'm going out for girls night. Yeah. Oh, what are you doing Saturday? Oh, Saturday morning, I'm going to the farmer's market in the morning. Then I'm going to go do yoga. And then there's this film series I'm going to go see in the afternoon. I have a life. And so he realizes not only do you have a life and you're really interesting and you keep your life moving and going, but he will get this inclination to chase you. That if he's going to really be able to get you and have you, He's going to have to start putting in the effort and the thought. Now, some women write me back and they go, Adrian, I've been leaning back and he's done nothing. He's not in his masculine energy. And he most likely has access to enough women that are doing it for him. Now, eventually he may tire of these women because they're not presenting a mental challenge for him. And by mental challenge, I don't mean you know, you're like a brain teaser for him, but you have your own life, you have your own endeavors, you have this rich, full, juicy life that you have created for yourself, and it doesn't revolve around the man. You're a goddess on the pedestal, and he is looking up at you, just enamored of you, and that is what creates this admiration and this chase and this bond and this wonderful, beautiful, masculine, feminine energy exchange that keeps a guy just going after you and going after you. I have a really popular video. Um, I'll list it below after this video ends about how my husband, I was out riding my bike and he was somewhere riding his bike. He goes on like 50 mile rides. I go on like 10 mile rides. And he found me and he said, I was cub hunting. I was cub hunting. He calls me cub. And he was hunting me. He was driving all over the city trying to find me. I don't know what he thought I was doing. I was out riding my bicycle, but he found me and I needed my seat adjusted and my light wasn't working and he was fixing my bike. And this is what they like to do. They feel good when they do this stuff, when they have a job for us and they're doing things for us, they feel good. Now don't go like find him work to do. I also believe you should be really self-sufficient and not like crazy dependent on getting the man to do things for you, okay? Now, if you're enjoying this video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, it'll help other women discover this information. So just take a moment and hit your little thumb if you like this video. I'm gonna continue with travel. One of the best things you can do if you're in a relationship with a man or you're newly dating him and you know, you're a couple weeks or a couple months into it, um, one of the best things you can do if he's starting to back away is go take a trip by yourself or with a girlfriend. This one will work like magic. It really, really will. Uh, there was one weekend that stood out in particular in my mind, uh, not too far soon before my husband came back around. He was an ex at the time, and I hope some of you know the story about how he just showed up at my door on a Sunday and uh, asked, was there to, to marry me. He wanted to get married, but prior to that, a couple times he had wanted to see me, and it just... You know, he had one time said, hey, can you come together and meet me and a friend for lunch? And I was like, you know, why? Kind of, I was like, that sounds really nice. However, you know, lunch would be lovely, yet I'm kind of confused. Like, he goes, well, I figure since we're not together anymore, we could at least be friends. And I let him know, oh, well, I have always been your friend, but I don't want to be just friends. And that was it. He goes, well, what are you doing next weekend? And I was like, what is going on with this guy? I said, well, I'm going to go to visit a girlfriend. And we're doing this and this. It's 
going to feel wonderful to be out on the boat for the weekend. And I got a feeling in my gut when I sent that message because I could tell on my phone the little dots where someone's typing to you and then they don't. And I got this feeling. I was like, you know, I think something just happened there. And, and sure enough, that next weekend is when he came back around. Now, maybe those two things are unrelated. But even now, every once in a while, I take off and I go somewhere by myself. I just do it. Uh, just the other day, he said, oh, I was thinking Thursday night, or sorry, Wednesday night, we could go do such and such. And I go, oh my gosh, I'm going to the mall that day. I'm going to the mall in another city. And he goes, really? And I go, yeah. He goes, oh, well, I know you like that mall. We'll have a good time. And I'm like, I will, bye. And then they are, and then when I came home, he had cooked dinner. The house was clean. I don't know. They missed you. And they're like, this person's just going away. And I came home, he had me a new little cookbook. I didn't ask him to do any of this stuff. So really, take a trip. Take a trip all on your own. Even if you have to pack up the kids and take them along with you, go on a trip. Now, how can you use a lot of this stuff on social media to create this beautiful, beautiful space with a man? So there's a good chance he's watching you on social media. And what you can do is you can talk about how rich and full and juicy your life is on social media, but please don't overdo it. Don't, you know, say things like, I'm so happy I'm single. I can go do this now. Don't, you know, don't take it in that direction. <laughs> but take it more in the direction of, I feel, I'm feeling, or I felt, oh, I feel so relaxed sipping a cup of coffee at this, you know, little cafe in, you know, Asheville or wherever you may be. And you're just saying, here's what I feel in my body. Remember the key to this of, of getting a man just so triggered by what you're saying is you've got to tell him what's going on in your body. So I'll talk to clients and I'll say, well, let me help you learn how to do a feeling statement. And they'll say, okay, how did this feel for you? And they're like, oh, I woke up in the morning and this is one I did just yesterday. So... She said, oh, I woke up in the morning and my shoulders were so relaxed and my face, I just felt refreshed and, and it was really sunny outside. I said, beautiful. Okay, put the man in front of you. And he says, hey, how was your day? What would you say? She said, well, I got up early and I, it was really pretty and the sun was out and I got to work early. I said, whoa, 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 whoa. What happened to, here's what's happening in my shoulders. Here's what my face felt like. Here's what the sun felt like on my skin. What happened to it? She threw it out. Get him inside your body. Get him inside your body. Find your words about what you're feeling in your body. This is a fun one once you learn how to do it. You learn how to speak in a different way. You learn how to find out what you're feeling in your body. I say so often this work begins and ends with what you feel, and it does every bit of it from getting your ex back to calling forth the man that is meant to be your husband to from dating and dating and dating to having a radar beam that lets quality men know that you're out there it begins and ends with how you feel all right so i'm going to open up for some q and a oh my my last little bit i want to tell you before you go every day i want your mantra to be I have so much to look forward to today. I have so much to look forward to this weekend. I have so much to look forward to this year. I have so much to look forward to today. Live your life so that every day you have so much to look forward to. Make it that way. He's gonna find it very appealing. Plus, you're gonna have an amazing life. The man leads the way. The man leads the way. You see, you wouldn't be listening to this video and learning about your feminine energy and learning how to make your life rich and full and juicy if there wasn't some man leading this way for you. And the same goes for me. If I wouldn't have been dumped and heartbroken and all these horrible things, I would have never started learning about this.
I wouldn't need to, but now my life is so much richer for knowing it. I'm better for knowing this because of a man, because of a lot of men that hurt me too. Those men that are hurting you right now, they're leading the way. You're learning new things about yourself because of them. Okay, I'm gonna open up Q&A, put on my glasses here, and I'll just see. Uh, oh, someone said I have so much to look forward to. That's beautiful. Someone says an X question. Do you think wanting a man from recent past is a weak position? Why is it common to say past is past for a reason? I don't like that. I don't like past is past for a reason. Whatever you're feeling, whatever you've got going inside of you, it's real. And um, I follow you. I follow you. If, if you're in love with someone and you're curious if there's something else there, I have a program called the ABCs to get him back. Now, let's say you don't get him back. Let's say none of that happens. You're going to learn so much in this book. It's not a book. It's actually a video program and a, and a library. But you're going to learn so much in that process. You're going to learn a lot so this never happens to you again. So it is win-win. But I do teach you how to reconnect to a man. And obviously there was something really good there. There were some strong feelings. And I think that you really know when the two of you are just not over yet. You know it. You feel it. Uh, Alex said, I use your strategies, and in three days, my boyfriend told me his son's mother said she loved him weeks ago. He trusted me enough in three days to tell me something that he was afraid to before. That's awesome, Alex. That's awesome. And I know it might have not been the news you wanted. But when we trust ourselves, we're in our body, we're in our feelings, the man will trust us. The man will start to open up to us. And then you have an honest relationship. No more thinking, thinking, planning, vetting. All that anxious energy is just gone. You get to be a girl and he gets to be a guy. That's a good thing. Um... I don't know that what question wasn't for me. Okay, so I'm going to go to recent questions. Uh, my ex is married. It's been two years. He chased me. I chased him. And the silence. Oh, I don't know what that means. <laughs> but I don't like silence. I'm with you. Someone is watching from Japan. Dozo Orosuku Anagaishimasu. Nice to meet you. I probably slaughtered that Japanese. <laughs> uh, Fadwa says, what are some good signs that you should give a man that space? Sometimes I can tell a man feels so different from what he did a day or two before. You do that space every day. Every day my husband is chasing me. Every day. I, he doesn't know if I'm coming or I'm going. He doesn't know. I'm quiet. I'm creating space. He goes, what are you thinking about? What's going on? Are you okay? Yeah, baby. <laughs> I'm creating space. That doesn't mean don't share or talk or anything like that. Again, don't take extremes with your masculine energy, but you're balancing it. Oh, my dog is just begging, begging, begging to get on camera. Toki, say hi. Hi. <laughs> this is Toki. All right, so hi from Sweden. I think it's H-E-J in Sweden. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce that. Um, Anya says, my fiance ghosted me last month over a silly argument, gave me the silent treatment for a month. He called last week to confirm his decision. He was angry. He cried, then he laughed. I don't get it. So first thing, Ghosted is now a term everyone's using for any time a person just leaves them alone for a little while. <laughs> and I don't really think that's what it means. I'm not here to like cor correct you or, or criticize you. But, you know, everybody, please stop using ghosted. 
it ghosted means you went out on a date with a man and you had a really great time and then gone. It doesn't mean a week later you hear from him. He's gone. Okay, so what happened with your guy? He got mad at you. He felt a bunch of emotions that he didn't know what to do with. He went to the cave. He went away. And then he came back because he missed you. He came back because he missed you. And he might have gone on a date or two with some other girl and hated it. And then he comes back to you. So now I want you to tie his heart up for good. I want you to learn these tools and learn these methods. Now that he's pursuing you again, tie his heart up for good. Look, if any of you don't know where to start, I want to tell you two programs. One is a book and it's called 500 Ways to Talk to a Man. And it comes with a two day video series I did that shows you body postures and I do a lot of Q&A. So you learn how to script. The book, the beginning of the book, tells you kind of how to script. But then the rest of it, it's like little text messages uh, from things that guys would say that you'll know how to say back, okay? So you can use the little search icon to type in something like money. And it'll pull up everything I have about money. Should you pay, you know, half? What if he plans a trip and goes, by the way, here's your half of the bill. What if he does that? What if you live together? You make more money than he does. How do you figure this out? What if he makes a whole lot more money than you do? And he wants you to pay half. I show you how to do that in my book. That's just money. It talks about all sorts of things. Everything you can imagine. So that's an ebook. It comes with a two-day class. The other thing is Dating Unzipped I did with my good friend Helena Hart. And Dating Unzipped is two different programs. And even if you're married, we're calling it dating. But again, you can take the practical wisdom from that and apply it. So it's two programs. And it also comes with a VIP library, which is more than 17 items. So Dating Unzipped, the complete collection is $99. And it is a video program, but it also has a VIP library. 500 Ways to Talk to a Man is an ebook, but it also, you can purchase it with a two day video class I taught. If you just invest those two things, you're gonna learn so much and you're gonna be able to participate more at I Heart Love Academy, my free Facebook group, because everybody there's read that book or, you know, mostly everybody has and They've kind of taken a class or two from me and Helena. Some people have private coach with myself or Helena or just myself, whatever. You'll be able to like answer people's questions because you know how to do this. And then I pop in and I follow up with everybody. It's a lot of fun over there. So I want to go back to your questions here. Um, hi from Hungary. Hello. Um, you are so welcome. I'm very happy to share. Uh, oh, oh, Jennifer, uh, great question. When creating space, does that create boredom in the relationship? Oh, I love this question. <laughs> I just accidentally saw the one before and someone said, men are stupid, LOL. Well, I mean, sometimes they think we're stupid and I think both of us are stupid at different times. But anyway, does it create boredom? All right. Oh, hi from Brazil. Uh, does it create uh, boredom? Yes, it does. I have bad news for all of you. <laughs> Happy, healthy, loving relationship is going to feel boring. Not boring in a bad way, but boring in a new way. Because there is no drama. There is no up and down. There's no thinking and worrying and fretting. It's easy and it's steady and it'll feel boring for some of you, most of us probably, because most of us mom and dad maybe didn't do so good. There's no class that you took in high school or college that says how to be, you know, uh, productive and, and honest and balanced in a relationship. I never took that class in college. I never learned about any of this stuff until, you know, I was 40. So 
I hope I answered your question. It's boring, but in a positive, wonderful, good way. Then instead of solving problems and having arguments and working out all this junk, you just have a good life. You get to focus on doing the things as a couple that you want to do together. So it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Oh, you're welcome, Jennifer. Hi from the Caribbean and from France. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you for saying that, that I'm spiritual. Uh, that's very sweet. Um, someone said, texted him happy birthday today and asked if he wanted to do something Saturday. He didn't respond. I don't doubt it because you're leaning forward. You see, you're leaning forward. Just leave him alone. And the next time he texts you, or if he does text you back and go, yeah, I want to do something for my birthday, I want you to let it sit there for four hours. Now, I'm not telling you to do this like it's a game, but you got to create some tension and some space with that man. All right. And sometimes you just have to let a text sit there. Let it just sit there until you really know how to answer it and you really know what you're feeling in your body. It's not going to hurt to let it sit there for a little bit. Uh, Mika said, I told my boyfriend we should break up, but I changed my mind and now he's pulled away. What can I do? Go silent, go quiet, post nothing on social media, nothing. Do it for about four or five days and your phone will start ringing. You come back here to this chat and you write what happens. Do nothing. Don't post anything on social media. Do nothing. Go quiet five days and see what happens. Come back and let us know. He's going to be back in three, three days probably. And he'll be back and he'll still be mad. And he'll message you. And um, you see, so when you hurt a guy and you break up with him, he gets really mad and he gets really hurt. And so he's like, no, I'm going to go. I'm going to go then. So if you go, I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. If he goes, okay, I'll come back. Mm -mm. He's not going to do it. His ego will not let him do it. Same thing if a guy breaks up with you. So my husband has admitted to me that when he broke up with me one time, like he, by the time he got home, he was like, what have I done? Uh-huh. So statistically, a guy regrets a breakup within 24 hours, but he can't come back to you because he'll look crazy. You see? So you got to ride it out. Get my program, ABCs, to get him back. I own, <laughs> I own it when it comes to exes and getting them back. I don't want to brag. I don't think it's bragging if you can walk the walk. But let me tell you, I get plenty of people back together. And um, not only back together, but functioning in that healthy, healthy way. All right. I'm quoting Shonda Rhimes, by the way. Shonda Rhimes says, or I think it was in her book, she said, it's not bragging if you can do it, if you can back it up. So I back it up in my program. Um, I'm very proud of that program. Nikki says, so when he disappears after getting mad, you would talk to him when he reappears? Yes. You go, hi, I'm warm, I'm here. So what happens is a guy messes up, guy messes up and we go, I'm mad at you. And he goes, well, I'm mad at you. And you go separate ways. And then the guy comes back around and goes, baby, I, I tried to fix this. And you go, no, I'm still mad at you. Mm, wrong. So he's coming back around and saying, I'm trying to do right. And we keep punishing him. That's not how to, you know, train a positive relationship. If he's coming back around and he's being good and he's showing up again, you want to be warm. You want to let him know, I welcome this. I welcome this. Look, my husband has done some things <laughs> just as anybody's husband has. And I will just be fuming. But then he'll go, well, I did this. And I think that that's better. And I have to go, honey, that feels so good. And just, I just go like that. And he comes to me for a hug. You see? So you're letting him know that's how he builds that trust with you. 
that trust with you that you are not going to keep punishing him. He can feel like a man when he's with you. And he can do right by you. And you're not going to hold a grudge forever. Holding a grudge is, is toxic anyway. All right, I'm going to take one more question. Uh, I heard one metaphor that a relationship is like rowing a boat. Both sides have to be rowing for the boat to move. Let him row and follow his pace. So he's rowing the boat. Yes. And you're riding in it. <laughs> I like it. All right. Last question. It's about sex. Oh, someone said, if you emasculate him, he'll lo uh, you'll lose respect for him. Yes. Um, what's a good example of the Hail Mary pass when you haven't heard from an ex in three months and you want to reconnect with him? If you have my program, the ABCs to get him back, I talk about the Hail Mary. It's not a very complicated thing. But if you don't do the work before the three months, so I don't want you to be one of those emails where like, I waited three months. And I did a Hail Mary and he didn't want anything because there's work that you want to be doing in those three months. But it's something as simple as saying, you know, would feel really, you know, I've missed connecting, would feel really good to connect. What do you think? And let and see if that guy comes towards you. But if your energy is in a wrong place, don't do it. Don't do it. Get your energy from this high um you know, high feminine energy place. All right. I'm going to let y'all go. Sorry. <laughs> I got to stop at some point, but this has been really great chatting tonight. I've loved getting all of your questions and I hope I have given you some ideas about how to create space so you can make the man chase you. Uh, give me a little bit. I'll post some links in the uh, comments section in case you want to just look at some programs, learn a little bit more about this. As always, please subscribe. I have a lot of videos out there that'll teach you how to use your feminine energy to create a healthy, loving relationship that is honest and real. It is not based on manipulation or tactics or anything, um, you know, dirty or icky feeling for the both of you. This is good, honest, you know, loving relationship stuff I want to teach you. Uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. This helps other women find it. I do appreciate your thumbs up. It lets me know you liked it. So if you like it, please give it a thumbs up. All right, everybody, I will see you hopefully at I Heart Love Academy over on Facebook and back here for another Facebook Live or YouTube Live sometime. Much love. Mwah.